Hi, I'm Lauren Ritter with the Red Drum Gastro Pub in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Today we're going to be making a caramel flan. Uh, we already have the ramekins prepared with our caramel, so we're going to jump right ahead to do the custard. So for this particular recipe, we're using nine egg yolks and four whole eggs. Before we add anything else, I'm going to give the eggs a little stir, just to incorporate the yolks into the whites. And then from then, I have our sugar pre-measured. It's a two and a quarter cup to the 13 eggs we're using. I'm just going to go ahead and add that. And as soon as you add the sugar to the eggs, you want to make sure you mix it in. At the same time you're doing that, you're going to add your vanilla. It's one tablespoon of vanilla. The last thing I add in this step is the salt. So we're doing half a teaspoon of salt. So at this point, we have all the ingredients. It's time to add our whole milk. Slowly mix that in. Once we get that, all the sugar and eggs incorporated with the milk, we're going to strain it through a fine chinois. We want to get any piece of, of egg or shell or or anything we may have not gotten. We want our flan to be as smooth and creamy as possible. And I find it's helpful to use a ladle when straining through something like this. Push it down. And you'll see in here, there's, there's not a whole lot left, but you can kind of feel there's some sugar granules that didn't get dissolved into the mixture. Now is when we're gonna add our one quart of heavy cream, and that just gets gently stirred into the mix. This is what we call the base. From here, you can add any flavor you want. So you can kind of see on top, it looks a little foamy, a little bubbly. Keep your ladle completely flat. Just kind of gently get all of the, that foam and bubbles off the top. All right, that'll do it. So you can see we almost got a whole ladle full of unusable foam. Now is when we go ahead and add our ingredient of choice for flavoring. Today it's going to be caramel sauce. Four cups of flan base, one cup of caramel. So using a spatula, you want to scrape out everything. You don't want to add a whole lot of air at this point. You've already skimmed out all the foam you've created. So you want to just keep this as gentle as possible. So you can see we've got a nice, smooth, evenly mixed flan. Here are our prepared ramekins. They have the bottom layer of caramel, a nice, rich, deep color. If you want to have your ramekins in something that will hold a little bit of water, we're going to be baking this in a water bath. I'm just going to go ahead and pour. There's no weight measurement. It's just by eye, you want to go all the way to the top. So once you get to this point, you have all of your flan base in your ramekins. We need to fill our pan up with some water. You really just want it to be halfway up the side of the container. This is something that's done a little bit easier at the oven door. So the next step is this is going to go into a 325 to 350 degree oven. It'll take 45 minutes to an hour depending on how your oven heats. So we're ready to go in. So at this point we have taken our flan that's been baked for about an hour out of the oven, immediately remove it from the water bath, set it on a tray, let it cool for about 30 minutes, and then put it in the refrigerator. You don't want to kind of shock it by putting it into a cooler right away, but you definitely want to get it firm as quickly as possible. We're going to go ahead and prepare our accompaniments. For the caramel flan, it's going to be with pomegranate seeds and blood oranges. We're going to start with the pomegranates. Just cut it in half. The pomegranates are one of those fruits that a lot of people don't know how to prepare. With your hand, you put the cut side down, and you kind of open your fingers a little bit. You have a spoon, something hard, spatula, whatever, whatever you have at your house, and you just want to tap, tap the end. You can see they'll just fall through my fingers. We have some blood red oranges here. It's a little of a tart flavor. It's not quite as tart as a lime or a lemon or even a grapefruit. It sort of has enough acidity to cut through the caramel flan. That's why we chose pomegranates and blood oranges. Caramel flan is caramel in the flan, caramel topping, and a whole lot of sweetness. So we wanted something that will cut it. And you can see that each segment has little white stripes. So you just want to go on one side of the stripe all the way down to the middle and go on the opposite. You can see that the white is still attached. We've got our two red toppings for our caramel flan. We are now ready to go ahead and plate. We've got our caramel flan. So with a mini offset spatula like I have here, bread and butter knife, whatever you have at home, you just want to stick it in just half an inch. Gently run it around the edge. And to unmold it, you're going to turn it onto the plate, grab the ramekin with your thumbs and the plate with your fingers, and you're just going to shake. Our blood oranges are going to go around the flan. We're just going to lay them gently right there, making sure you pick the nicest ones you have. You want every bite to be perfect all facing the same direction. Now we've got our pomegranate seeds. They're so pretty, we want them to be on their own. We don't want to get them to get mixed up with the blood oranges, so we're just going to put a couple in between. You can see how nice and shiny and red they are. We're going to add a little bit of whipped cream to the top. 
and then we're going to top it just a couple of those pomegranate seeds. And there you have it, caramel flan with pomegranates and blood oranges.